My first toad was the Encilius alvarius, a Colorado River toad, a frigidy fucker that slipped out of my hands the moment I grabbed him. After a bit of back and forth though, I managed to wrap my mittens around him and give him a big old smooch on the back. I could hear my friend Kermit, yes, that's his real name, get over it, yelling at me in the distance, but it was already too late. As it turns out, there's a certain skill required to lick toads, safely, and unless you want to end up fucking dead, you better be careful when you tongue wash those little bastards. Well, I'm not dead, but right now, straight up truth shooting, I kinda wish I was. Anyway, Kermit knew how to handle buford toxin overdoses, so he got me sorted. But I'll never forget all the consuming anxiety that overcame me as I tripped balls having been told there's a real chance that I might just keel over and snuff it. Point is, I've learned my lesson. I know my toads now. Or, that is to say, I know most toads now. So when Kermit called me up mid-isolation to ask me if I'd received the toad yet, I must admit I was a little bit confused but also mildly intrigued. Man, you got it yet? Have you tried it? What the fuck are you on about, Kerm? I asked. The toad. He whispered. The toad. Look, it doesn't matter which word you emphasize. I still don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Man, you ain't got it yet? Shit. You're in for a nice one. You're tripping right now, aren't you? Oh, fuck yes, he spat. It's like, man, I don't. It's like I've licked God's balls, man. Like my brain is vibrating in and out of existence. In my eyes, my body, the things you feel, man. It's like the thing they say, you know? Writing about music is like dancing about architecture. And man, I'm dancing about architecture like you wouldn't fucking believe. Alright, alright, it's good shit, I sighed, but I still don't have it. Rob should be there soon, he murmured. Shit, fuck, what was that? Man, I gotta go. There's a huge ass celery trying to fuck my fridge. Wait, I considered calling him back, but considering Kermit on a trip, I knew it'd be no use. So instead, I sat down by the window with a cigarette to see if I could catch a glimpse of Rob. Now Rob had been arrested half a dozen times carrying toads for Kermit, but they could never prove it was an intent to distribute, so he always got off with an intent to lick. But even those stacked up though, so these days he was being real careful with his toad mewling to such an extent that he suddenly appeared behind me. Kerm sent me, Rob said hoarsely. Holy crap, I exclaimed quite blasphemously. He shrugged. Sorry man, gotta be careful. The popo have been on me like a fly to a frog's tongue lately. Fuck me man, I gasped. You're getting too good at this. Thanks, here's your toad, he said, handing me a plastic container. But I gotta say man, I wouldn't touch that thing if I were you. Why? I asked, eyeing the container suspiciously. He shuffled around nervously. It's not like any toad I've ever seen, he said. It's freaky as fuck. What do you mean? I mean what I just said. He edged away slowly. Just take my word for it, Leo. Throw the fucking thing in the toilet and don't stop flushing until your arm is sore. And with those ominous parting words, he was gone. Rob was a nice enough guy, but he was also unbelievably paranoid. Comes with the toad mewling territory I suppose. In any case, we all sort of ignored him when he went all chemtrails on us, so I didn't really give it much thought before I'd unboxed the toad. I'm not sure if I actually said anything, but when I think back to that exact moment, I'm sort of outside of my body, watching my dry, cracked lips motion a good old, 
What the fuck? The toad. If it in fact was a toad, wasn't a toad. That's the kind of fucked up paradoxal shit we're dealing with here. It was toad shaped, sure. The legs, the exterior glands, the dry skin, oh man, the skin. That's what made me take a step back initially. I've seen toads in all shapes, sizes, and colors, but never, never, one that had a human skin complexion. Why is that so off-putting? Why does that imagery make the bile rise in my throat? I don't know man, it just does. Human skin complexion or not, I was still convinced that it was a toad at this point. So I shook my head and swallowed deeply, taking a step forward to get a good look at the little bugger. What the fuck? The step forward was immediately followed by multiple stumbling steps backward, until I realized I was uselessly bumping into the wall over and over again. Human skin and a human face. That's the combination that had me stumbling around in fear. Knocking things over right, left, and center. Hyperventilating into pillows, mugs, empty beer bottles. Splashing my face continuously with icy cold water. Until I finally collapsed under the crushing weight of all the insanity. Face. I mumbled to myself. Face. I fumbled for my phone. I had it somewhere. Didn't I? It's always on you, isn't it? Like an extended body part, always within arm's reach. Ah, the pocket. Always in the last place you look. With trembling fingers, I called up Kermit, never once letting my sweat stinging eyes stray too far from the harrowing container. Leo? A voice that was definitely not Kermit spoke. Leo, is that you? Kerr? I stammered incoherently. Kermit? Don't do it, Leo. The raspy voice murmured. Don't touch it. Kerm? Don't. Kerm. He was gone. Quite literally at that point, I suspect. My mind raced a thousand thoughts fighting for the floor at once. Not a single one potent enough to grab the cerebral microphone. Rob. I whispered. Toilet. Flush it. Flush it until your arm is sore. I nodded to myself internally. A shaking, adrenaline-fueled body rising to its feet, shambling in the general direction of the container. Why? I thought. Why the fuck did I open it? Now I'd have to see that hideous fucking creature one more time, and I really wasn't up for that. Arriving at the container, I was greeted by the horrid irony of my own thoughts. It took a second or two in the mental void before my mind caught up to reality. But when it did, I seriously, severely, desperately wanted nothing more than to see the non-toad once more. It was gone. But where? How? I never let my eyes off it. I swore it. I swear it. Then, I felt something landing on my neck. Something big, muscular, with bloaty slug veins fat enough for me to feel its heart pumping. I let out a panic shriek, momentarily paralyzed when I failed to recognize my own animalistic howl, before diving to the floor instinctively. But, much like my very first experience smooching a toad, it was too late. The toxin, whatever it was, bufotenin, psilocybin, DMT, God's balls, slapped me into the hallucinogenic beyond in an instant. Unlike Kermit though, it didn't feel like I was dancing about architecture at all. Soon enough, drifting into a waking nightmare, I lost control of my body, and I could do nothing as I witnessed my flesh becoming one with the floor. I could feel my brain spread like mushy goo. Slithering cerebral tendrils stretching to cover the entirety of my shitty apartment. A feeling of impending doom dominated everything, like perpetual death. Shitty as that may be though, it didn't even come close to being the worst part of my day. I could feel it, you know, the toad, 
It crawled all over me while I was woefully incapacitated. And fuck me if it wasn't the worst sensation I've ever had the displeasure of living through. Wart-like glands rubbing all over my skin, most likely releasing more of the toxins by the second. At some point, while I was somehow enjoying the sight of my own eyes slowly melting, it slithered over my face, rolling down onto the floor, facing me directly, and then it smiled. That's still not the worst part, although it was fucking horrendous. A human-skinned, human-faced, human-eyed, human-toothed toad smiling at you. Pray to whichever deity you worship that you don't have to ever face that. The endlessly flowing toxins soon became overwhelming, and I slowly felt my mind drowning in a heavy mist, of which soon became too powerful to fight. My last memory is of the toad smirking, a set of vividly blue eyes staring into mine. It's strange, you know? I almost felt peaceful, like I welcomed death. I woke up hours later with a headache that I suspect closely resembles being stabbed repeatedly from inside the brain with a fucking corkscrew. I could hardly move at all, but when my memories returned to me, particularly the memory of the toad, I somehow managed to stumble to my feet, exiting in the apartment in a post-trip haze. No, I haven't gotten to the worst part yet, but it's coming. I think I was halfway into my car when I noticed it. My skin. Look, there's this myth about touching toads, right? It's like the spider myth. Like how on average, a spider lays eight eggs in your mouth nightly or something. Only it has to do with warts. Touch a toad, grow warts. It doesn't work like that though. I've practiced totalingus for the better part of a decade now and I haven't gotten a single wart to show for it. Well, unless you count the hundreds, I suddenly sprouted overnight. They're not warts though, I think. I'm no dermatologist, but they're not supposed to be this fucking big, I think. Like cysts, I guess. Warty pus filled cysts. No, that's not the worst part still. You see, when I looked closer, there's something about them, something inside them, something moving inside them. Once I realized what I was looking at, I felt the need to start cutting them open, one by one, dragging the little fuckers out of there. Yeah, I've seen them before. I even had a fish tank full of them at one point. Not this particular species though, but they're all the same to some extent. Tiny, human-faced, tadpoles.